everybody, welcome back. In this episode, I'm gonna be painting my M240 incinerator unit. This guy has been sealed with creature cast. I'm starting to get really used to creature cast for props. It goes on thin, pretty even. I like to use it with a spray gun. It's all sealed up, and now the next step is to paint this bad boy and age it. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Once it was the uh, creature cast was dry, I went ahead and primed it with the uh, 2X. I like using this as the, the 2X semi-gloss black. And I sprayed this on the day before to let this have a good eight hours to dry before I start masking it. But now that's done, uh, one thing I discovered about this gun is that when you're building something you're especially going to travel with, you gotta make it travel friendly. So of course I had this come off with a magnet, which is great. But I went to go put inside the container, I realized the barrel's too long and this is, so it wouldn't fit in the container. So of course, I went ahead and put a magnet. And as you guys can see here, I put a little bit of a pin and a hole so the pin slides in. And the reason I put the pin is so it helps stay on because sometimes a magnet, if you just bump it, it falls off. So the same thing with the, uh, the barrel, pull it off. I have a magnet there and a pin and again a little small hole and I went ahead and put like little tabs on the inside so they can line up just line this up like this there you go it's a little bit more stable which again this is gonna be really helpful when I paint because I know for a fact that this part stays black so that's gonna come off and the barrel stays black so that's gonna come off Got some Krylon Fusion Olive Drab Green. I'm gonna paint this now. I believe that this section here is black. So instead of painting this all green and, and then painting black again, I'm just going to mask this stuff off. So we're gonna start with the tank. Uh, this midsection is black and everything else is Olive Drab. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start with using the, uh, the plastic wrap, which is awesome. This is a great way to mask things. Just gonna take a pair of scissors and just trim off the excess of the, the plastic. So now I'm going to take some Tamiya tape. I'm going to tape the edges on the actual part and just on the plastic. So the only part in this canister that's black is the midsection here, so everything else stays all drab. So this is good. Let's put this aside. And here's the flamethrower body. I think I'll just run over a little bit long and cut it to fit. After close examination, uh, this also is black and this piece back here is black and this handle in here is black so to save me some time i got uh, this frog tape so i can cover a lot more area quicker there it is i went through and got everything masked off so the next step is we're going to go back hang this with some wires i got my krylon olive drab paint we're going to go ahead and shake this up take this outside and lay down this color coat as well as the canister. There it is. Bang. Look at that. Gotta love that olive drab paint. Now, here's the favorite part demasking. All that time it takes, but it unmasks very quickly. But let's watch the magic. Like that. Wow, look at that. So cool. There it is. Everything's demasked. I put it all together. This looks fantastic. The olive drab really makes it pop. I love the blacks. I just painted it. The paint is really fresh. I'm going to give it some time to dry. Oh, a little bit of attention detail I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, when I was building, there is a part on the flamethrower, this little tab right here. I had the gun done, I completely forgot about it. So I went ahead and took a foam uh, rod from TNT, a little foam dowel, and I took a drywall screw, put a hole in the foam dowel, and put the drywall screw and screwed into the foam. Now the reason I did that is because it's really solid. Now, if it was just foam, my fear is I would probably just knock it off or get ripped off. So I wanted to give it some structural support by putting a drywall screw through it. So that's a little, there's a little bit of a detail I did off camera, so I wanted to explain to you guys how I did that when you go to make yours. Okay, the paint had time to dry, this is perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with some acrylics. I got some uh, Nova colors, I have the Mars Black, and I have a little bit of 
raw uh, br raw umber dark. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the black with the um, the dark umber. I always like I think black just basic black. Too much black looks kind of artificial, so I like to mix a little bit of the brown with the black and make it really thin, so it looks more like dirt and grime opposed to just black. Now mix up a black wash. It's always a little bit of a. I like to do it. I want it always to be dark, but not too heavy. You don't want it to stick too much. You want to be able to wipe some of it off. So it's that perfect threshold between paint and water. I don't want to contaminate this uh, paint with a dirty brush. So it's going to take a paint stir stick. There you go. Add a little distilled water. So we're going to start <clears throat> with this part here first. Just do a little test and see how, how heavy this is. This is morally just this particular wash. It's just to take the newness out of it. Now I'm just going to blot it. I'm not going to wipe it so much. I'm just going to blot. I got my wash a little bit darker. Again, what I do is I have a spray bottle standing by. So if I weather something too heavy, or I'm happy with it, I can always hit it with water and wipe it off. The other thing too is this paint has a matte finish to it. And I always found that a matte finish with, uh, it will definitely, the paint will definitely, especially acrylic paint, will really stick to that. Again, while I was painting this and masking things off, like these areas, this is black, and this is black, I totally should have done some more research because it turns out that this piece here is black and this was black. So if I masked this when it was all black, it would have been a lot easier. But nope, I did not see it at the time. So now it's painting, I'm gonna go back with a brush. Mm -hmm. All right, I got some uh, oil paints here and I'm looking at a lot of the stuff here. I like the age on this. But anything where there's a screw head, and you can, it looks still relatively clean, like this still looks clean. All these little deep holes and cracks and crevices, especially on the screw heads. Uh, I'm gonna mix up some um, some black and some burnt sienna and some brown, mix it together and get the nice dirty color. I'm gonna go in on these screws in some certain spots, just random here, like kind of break it up a little bit. Go around it. Our next thing we're going to do is that actually these holes are supposed to like go all the way uh, through the flamethrower and I didn't really do that. I like, I like these holes on the side, but on this, we're just going to paint these black, but we're going to paint them flat black. I just think the silver, the bigger scratches, I've seen pictures of this with the Nixon scratches were pretty big on it. You now this looks great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move on and do the silver uh, Nick technique on the actual body itself too. I don't want to go too crazy. I like the darkness of this guy. So if I do any scratches, it'll be very subtle. I have some rub and buff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take the rub and buff, put on some foil here. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I want to apply the rub and buff, but I want to do it very lightly. And uh, one of the techniques I like to do is I take it, uh, take the rub and buff and I apply it with a brush. Because sometimes the finger can be a little heavy. So I come in like this with a brush. Because I discovered with rub and buff, if you go too heavy, it's kind of hard to get it off. So there's like no going back. There it is, the M240 incinerator unit from Aliens. This was a great build. Again, this guy says patterns available in my store. And this all comes apart for traveling. So this comes off, this comes off, and the tank comes off. Because when you're going to a con, you want to take your flamethrower, you make sure you make things break down. There's this one last finishing touch we have to do. There it is, the M240 incinerator unit from Aliens. This came out awesome. Again, if you guys are watching this video, I have a video on me making this. So don't forget to watch that. And this video, I am painting it. And if you're new to my videos, don't forget to subscribe. Go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, and you can download the pattern and make this yourself. 
I call this completed. This came out awesome. What you guys can do though, if you want to add an extra bit of realism to your prop, you can put scent on them. This is cosplay scent. This is from um, Duffworks. This is a fire and I have smoke. This is a fire smoke. We do you shake it up really well. Spray it. Oh my gosh, I can smell it. Now I'm going to spray a little smoke. Ah, <laughs> so again, if you're at a con and you put this in front of somebody's face, they'll go, wait a minute, do I smell smoke? Yes, you do, because I just got done incinerating a bunch of aliens with this bad boy. That's great. So yeah, everybody, Duffworks, the company is. I'll have links for this below the video. If you're making a costume, you can not only make a costume look cool, you can also make it smell like what you want it to smell like. Pretty darn cool. This is awesome, guys. Check out Duffworks. Be sure to shop through my Amazon link. Every little bit helps, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you back next time right here on Evil Ted Live.